people of Ohio, thank you. Thank you for your trust. What do you say? It's election us. night in Ohio and across America, and already there are some big winners to include this man, Thank Governor Mike DeWine. The polls have been closed for about three and a half hours, and those results are rolling in. Here's new video of ballots being dropped off earlier this evening at the Franklin County Board of Elections. One of the most hotly contested midterm election cycles in years. And we're still waiting on results for some of the big races. We have live team coverage for you tonight. Reporters and experts standing by with insight on the races and issues that matter to you. Now, the first race we want to focus on is the U.S. Senate. Still underway here, Republican J.D. Vance, Democrat Tim Ryan fighting for Senator Rob Portman's seat. ABC News is calling the race for Vance. The Associated Press is not yet making that call, but again, one of the most closely watched races in the country. Tom Bosco live at the Renaissance Columbus Hotel with Vance's camp there at the GOP watch party where there's been many reasons to celebrate tonight to Tom. Yeah, the Republicans have had a lot of reasons to celebrate, and now that uh, news that you just said that ABC has called this for Vance uh, is coming to me now from you guys. Thank you. Uh, I had not heard that yet. We had another network call it for Vance as well. Vance with about an eight-point lead right now, and not too many votes left to count in the state of Ohio. We've not heard anything from Vance's people yet. I thought we might hear right here at the top of the hour here downtown at the uh, Renaissance Hotel. We've already heard from the governor and and uh, most other state uh, office holders. Um, we also heard from U.S. Senator Rob Portman, the Republican who is retiring and set off the frenzied race to fill that slot. And he says the message that J.D. Vance had resonates with Ohioans. You've seen the response he's getting. You've gotten to know him. People of Ohio have gotten to know him. And the policies he's talking about are the ones that Ohioans care about, right? So people are concerned about inflation and the economy and their family budgets. They are concerned about what's going on at the border because we're essentially a border state. We're getting overrun with this fentanyl that's causing overdose deaths at record levels. Again, though, no official word here, and we've not seen anything on uh, the news channels that we're monitoring, uh, that the uh, party, the watch party, is monitoring here. Certainly, you would expect to hear something, and uh, I'm sure we will from this crowd if this is called uh, anytime soon here. And we will hear, no doubt, from J.D. Vance later on this evening, one way or another. But at this point, with an eight-point lead, it looks like he is uh, on his way to a victory to become the next U.S. Senator uh, from the state of Ohio. More, of course, as it happens from here, but now live on your side in downtown Columbus, I'm Tom Bosco. Guys, back to you. Tom, thank you. Now, here's a look at Tim Ryan's campaign in Boardman, which is near Youngstown. This is his home district, a smaller gathering to be sure compared to the GOP watch party here in Columbus. Ryan's campaign has been based around the working families of Ohio. Bob Clegg and Emily Quick Schreiber joining us now and political experts helping us to analyze these results. So Bob is a Republican strategist. Emily is an independent head of a nonpartisan group called the Matriots. Emily, I want to start with you. What is your reaction to what seems to be a big night for the Republican Party? So what I'm seeing across Ohio right now is a shift from maybe that purple state that we've been talking about, that we've been looking forward to from, uh, we thought maybe in 2020, 2021, we'd still come back to being purple. It does look very red tonight. Um, and, and I'm really interested to see the outcomes of the, two, the three Supreme Court races. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some women who are running in that election, and that's a, a pretty strong showing for Ohio either way, because we have four women running for Supreme Court justice in the state of Ohio. I love I love seeing point. that. Uh, and I'm interested to see the outcome here on the on the Vance Ryan ticket. We'll see. Bob, if uh, J.D. Vance is in fact the new U.S. Senator, uh, how does he compare to Rob Portman and what do you see from him in Congress? Um, I think they're going to be similar in the way they view uh, a lot of the major issues. Um, I think J.D. Vance is going to bring more of a uh, younger high tech type of outlook you know to the senate um I, he isn't a traditional politician so i see him bringing some of that real world experience uh, to the senate not that rob portman was a career politician but he would go in and out and and uh i think jd's going to bring in a you know breath of fresh air to the whole set u.s senate maybe more independent yeah i mean 
more independent, but just have more different ideas than a lot of the traditional, you know, candidates have. I think he comes from a different viewpoint. Yeah. We have about 30 seconds left here. What do you think is the voters' message tonight with the way they have voted? I think the voters are showing us that Ohio is looking fairly red right now. There are great opportunities. Um, one of my favorite things about Ohio is that we have fantastic people who are, who are willing to vote, are showing up to vote, are exercising democracy here in the state of Ohio. And so that's what I see coming out of this evening. What about you, Bob? I think voters are saying they don't like the direction our country is going in. They don't like what President Biden is doing. And they're showing it by the way they're voting today. Well, he wouldn't be the first uh, president in office in the nope. midterm to get Would that message. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you both so much. Thank Appreciate you. it so much. Uh, race for governor here in Ohio called very early on this evening for Mike DeWine, pretty much immediately after the polls closed. Haley Nelson also live at the Renaissance tonight where Governor DeWine's camp is celebrating. Haley. Stacia, Bob, the mood here decidedly upbeat after many of these calls. The governor's race called relatively early. This is the Ohio Republican Party watch party downtown here in Columbus. I just spoke with many of the state leaders who won their races from Attorney General Dave Yost. I also talked to Supreme Court Justice Pat DeWine and others. They say today is clearly a big win for them. They think it sends a big message. Many of the themes we've heard them bring up many times include inflation, public safety and more. I do want to talk about the governor's race that was called relatively quickly for DeWine over Democratic challenger Nan Whaley. We did see Mike DeWine and John Husted take the stage earlier this evening. They were flanked by their family taking a victory speech, for example, getting a lot of cheers and applause. Now, DeWine kept his comments very much focused on himself and Husted and their message. I did not hear them make any kind of a mention of Nan Whaley. Again, common themes from them. That includes bringing investment to Ohio. They also also talked about a focus on Ohio children, certainly things that we have heard from them for the past four years, likely to hear about for four more years. Take a listen. There's no better place to live. There is no better place in this world to live. There's no better place to live than Ohio. There's no better place to raise a family. There's no better place to start a business. There's no better place to grow a business. And right here in the Buckeye State, this is the place to be. And so, of course, a lot of supporters here cheering for them, certainly happy Republicans here at this watch party. Now, DeWine said why. People ask him why, what is behind all of this. He says there is unfinished business for Ohio. We've seen a lot of the other Republican leaders take the stage, thank voters, things of that nature. But, of course, there are questions. Will we see DeWine be more direct in his upcoming administration? Will we see four years where he's less willing to bend to party whim or persuasion? We will let you you know, of course, tracking all of this. We've not seen J.D. Vance on the stage just yet, but we will track everything here from downtown Columbus. Live on your side, I'm Haley Nelson. Thanks, Haley. And just before 10 o'clock, we heard from Nan Whaley conceding the race for governor and addressing her supporters. Mamie Ba in Dayton now with more on her message. Now the people here are disappointed but not deterred. Now Whaley took to the state not long ago to concede the race. She also said that she called DeWine and wished him well on his second term as Ohio governor. Now Whaley did get a tad bit emotional speaking of the political glass ceiling she broke, becoming the first woman in Ohio to win a major party nomination to run for governor. And after a tough like loss like this, you might feel like giving up. And hey, no one would really blame you. There's a lot that's pretty broken about Ohio and our whole country. And there's a lot that's not. I stand before all of you and every little girl watching this at home as the first woman ever nominated for governor in the state of Ohio. Now Whaley says she will continue to fight for the people of Ohio and also bringing up abortion, saying that she'll do whatever it takes to get it codified. Back to you. Mamie Ba reporting for us tonight. We want to compare the counties. Governor DeWine won 
four years ago compared to tonight. Kate Seifert tracking that for us. What are you seeing? Some interesting results here. Well, yes, Asia, take a look at this map. Lots of red as we've been talking about all evening long. So these yellow circles, there's nine of them. These are the nine counties that Governor Mike DeWine lost four years ago. And you can see just three of them remain blue. So he turned over all of these other counties across Ohio. What's interesting that I want to point out is Mahoning County. That is the county that Tim Ryan represents. Mm -hmm. And and also red is Montgomery County, where Nan Whaley is from. That wasn't blue before, but it indeed stayed red with her on the ballot this time. So lots of red, a tsunami of red. We've been saying that all, all evening for the state of Ohio. Big results for the Republican Party as we are seeing that tonight. Kate, following that for us. Bob, back over to you. Thanks, Asia. Thank you, Kate. We're also watching a few state Supreme Court races, three seats at stake for six-year terms, the first year that we've been able to see the party affiliation of the candidates here. And a look at the current results for Chief Justice. It uh, has the Republican Sharon Kennedy right now leading the Democrat Jennifer Broner, 57 to 43 percent, with almost all of the precincts reporting there. Democrat Terry Jamison hoping to take out uh, Republican Pat Fisher's seat, but right now Fisher with the solid lead in that again with 95 percent reporting. And Democrat Marilyn Zayas was running against the incumbent Republican Pat DeWine, but to DeWine with a solid lead there. So it appears that uh, the Republicans will maintain the majority on the state Supreme Court. We have much more to come on this election night. Many school districts across central Ohio had bonds and levies on this ballot. And for some, jobs could be at risk. Lisa Rontala will break it all down for us in a moment. Plus, we've been above average for so long that we can barely remember what it's like to be chilly. That, though, is about to change. Some much cooler air is coming. We'll show you when to expect that and what a tropical storm means for us at 1118. About the breaking news in the race for the U.S. Senate in Ohio, Republican J.D. Vance and Democrat Tim Ryan fighting for Senator Rob Portman's seat. ABC News is calling that race for Vance. However, the Associated Press not making that call just yet. 95 percent of precincts reported and uh, Vance right now with uh, an eight point lead in percentage points. As soon as Vance uh, uh, you know, accepts uh, victory in this, if in fact that happens, will of course take you there to his speech live. School issues top of mind for many voters here on Election Day. Several districts across central Ohio had bonds and levies on the ballot. Lisa Rontala joining us now tracking some of the biggest. Lisa. Well, some big news for some local school districts tonight. Pickerington local schools had been threatening more virtual learning if they did not have the money to build a new junior high school. Well, it looks like they will be getting that money and expand the campus. With most of the ballots in, votes are passing and 90 million million dollar bond for construction and in Upper Arlington uh, schools and Worthington schools indicated that they would have to cut positions even teachers if their levies did not go through tonight. Worthington wants to rebuild a high school. Upper Arlington gathers 83 percent of its revenue from property tax. All of those issues passing by a heavy lead right now. Now let's send things over to Kate Seifert for a look at some more results. Kate. Thanks, Lisa. We are also following two major issues on the ballot, both of which could change Ohio's Constitution. We're going to start here with issue one. It would make it easier to keep people locked up before their case heads to trial. Supporters say it's all about public safety. You can see here an overwhelming amount of folks voting yes to this. Voters we talked to who were against this said it targeted poor communities and minorities. All right, let's move on to issue two. The other one, big one on the ballot tonight. It prohibits governments from allowing non-citizens to vote in local elections. You could see results overwhelmingly people voting yes for this. There was one village that hoped that this did not pass. That's Yellow Springs, Ohio, a village in Ohio. They decided to allow non-citizens to vote in local elections back in 2019. That, of course, overturned with these results tonight. Marshall.